<laughs> yeah, you don't even have a reputable enough bank to go get your money back in full. I'm not sure where you put it. All right, guys. Caleb here, um, and I'm with Matt and Isaac, and they're haggling over the prices of a side by side right now. But we're going to put together our last Radix, uh, the last one we have here at the farm. This will be the third one we put together, the Radix blind. Um, we want to do the first two before we actually filmed anything, just so we didn't really look stupid while we were doing it. But uh, it is a lengthy process. This will probably take us about two hours. Um, it's not exactly hard. The directions aren't hard to follow, but it's just a lot you know if you're used to putting together a ladder stand and that takes you maybe 30 minutes 45 minutes at the most you can put it together and then take it out in the woods that's not going to happen with these radix blinds so obviously there's a lot more involved they're bigger but if you're going to be putting these things out in the woods you're going to have to dedicate a day just to putting the stands together and then another day to transport these things out in the woods because they're not the easiest things to transport either we found that out we have a flatbed trailer that we put ours on and strap it all down and it's still a lot but uh, so we're going to show you some of the little things while we do this. Uh, like I said, probably about two hours. Obviously that, the video won't be that long, but uh, we'll give you some little tips and tricks and then we'll show you what the final product looks like. How many bolts? Six. No, four A's. So one of the first things that Isaac, who's been here for all the builds and the doing is... <laughs> is that your quote? You're not able to get away from this Jurassic Park love, you know. <laughs> but the first thing Isaac does is he opens up the bolt bag and he starts to kind of divide up the bolts because there's all different bolts and sizes. And if you accidentally use the wrong size bolt in the wrong place, You're then you have to rude. then you have to take everything apart and start over. So you don't want to do that. So you want to make sure you know which bolts are which and get them all divided out. So quick tip: Matt here is holding half inch for everything. Use a cordless drill, or we're using we're using an impact because the ones that come with it, you try to do it by hand with those, not gonna work out very well. Half inch impact, and one for the hand, stabilize it, gonna have a good time. But that being said, something we found, which you can't see from this angle, there is gonna be some times where you need the ones that come with it, because for example, right there, that nut is in between the weld, and the only way to get to it was from an angle with the handheld on the key with it. How about your toe, Matt? It's the top bolt that we couldn't fucking use. So we make it work. So for the octagon, which is the top part, the actual blind, the hard blind, you have to switch it out for 7 16ths. Makes it like a lot easier, faster. Different size bolts. Yeah, different, different size, size bolts. This build's going a lot better than the first two. It's going pretty quick, so. One of the major problems we're having with these builds, the, the instructions are super good, super detailed. They tell you everything you need to do. All the bolts, parts are labeled. But this is one of the major problems we're having. If you look here, these parts are very specific and they're numbered. And this is the number five, which we need for the octagon part of the blind. But as you can see, there's fours. There's another four down here. So I don't know if it's something with shipping. The stickers moved around, but not all the parts are labeled. But then there's another part in here that you go all the way through the instructions. It's labeled as a number nine, but this part's not listed in the instructions anywhere. So we didn't actually put these parts on until we had the blinds up in the air last time. So just, just be aware, the instructions are good, but some of the parts are mislabeled. This part is the top of the blind. Uh, it is a very difficult bolt to get on. For some reason, this bolt you use, I don't know why they didn't make it half inch longer, but you only have a little bit of wiggle room. So our method to get it on there was we would take one of these off, put the nut on there, torque it down, and then take the nut off and it'll give you a lot of wiggle room to put the last one on, then torque it all down at the end. Because this bolt literally only has about a quarter inch of thread showing when everything's lined up perfectly. And it's really hard to get all eight of these pieces lined up perfectly. So just keep that in mind. All right, blind number two is done. Radix on the side of the Seafield food plot. And we'll probably be hunting that one opening weekend. Chairs are in it. Good to go.
It didn't take long for us to find success using the Radix. And they work great for both archery and gun hunting. One of the big advantages of the metal frame is the built-in gun rest for gun season. Something else we found out pretty quick was that the deer were not afraid. Unlike ground blinds, deer seem to pay absolutely no attention to the elevated metal framed blinds. Even older mature bucks had no fear of the blinds. Seen a lot of deer. Another big advantage is the size. You can very easily accommodate two bow hunters. And it's especially easy for cameraman to get away with more movement. One major disadvantage is the fact that they do not retain heat. They claim to be insulated, but the canvas does a poor job of keeping out the elements. Break the old Cherokee out and try to get as soon as the day they don't sit here. During the late season, sound also escapes pretty easily. We believe, though, that for the price, these Braddock's blinds are definitely worth it.